In the short time that I have with you today, I want to ask you to do one thing. And that is, I want to ask you to support an effort which ultimately, honestly, deeply, I believe, is supporting yourselves. I, I have a little bit less time today than typical, but what I want to do is impart to you why I believe firmly and why I personally support this type of work. Ultimately, human beings are all motivated for one thing. Every human being is motivated towards the same thing, and that is every human being wants self-preservation, happiness, safety, we want these things and we'll do anything to protect ourselves and our families from harm. Everyone agree? Yeah? Whether you're a Muslim or you're a non-Muslim, you have the same motivation. Now, I want to tell you something. Now, because, uh, you know, he, the brother had a short time, he didn't do active fundraising. But I'm going to ask you to, to, to privately support this effort. And I'm going to tell you why. This effort is standing up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. Now you might think, what does that have to do with me? I'm safe, right? My family is safe. We're, we don't have a threat. My husband or my brother or my father's not in jail. So what does it have to do with me? I'm gonna tell you what it has to do with you. First of all, all and every single one of these cases at any moment can come close to home and i promise you that i promise you that any trial that faces others can also face us and we have to always look at it like that when we see a person who's going through a trial we shouldn't only say oh i feel sorry for them but we should also say that could be me and wallahi, it could be me. And it could be my father, and it could be your father, and it could be your husband, or yourself, or your sister, or your son. And the reality is that when one person is dealt with unjustly, it means all of us can be dealt with unjustly. So when we stand up and we support the fight for justice, for anyone who's being treated unjustly, we are actually protecting ourselves. Does that make sense? Because I'll give you an example. This brother that he mentioned, one of the brothers, he asked the question, how do you say to students in Arabic? And one of the students, mashallah, knew, to say to students in Arabic is, it's the same word as a terrorist group, and therefore he got flagged, and therefore not only did they take him, they took his three sons for no reason, and one of them was held in prison, in jail, solitary confinement for almost a year, for no reason, because his father said two students in Arabic over the phone, or on a message, I'm not sure. So do you understand what that is? That means it can be anyone. Why am I telling you this? Because what did MLFA do? They actually went back Yes, they released the man after a year, but what did they go back and do? They went back and sued the government for, do this was unconstitutional. This was the essence of injustice. They went back and sued the government for doing that. Now, when you go and sue the government for doing things like that, what is that going to bring about? It's going to prevent these types of cases for con from continuing. It means that, it's, that they're less likely to do it again to your brother or your husband, or your father. Do you understand? So we have to see this as something very personal. And when we support an effort for justice, I'll tell you something else that will happen. And this is the most important part. We are told again and again and again by Allah and His Messenger that when we support a person in need, guess what happens to us? Allah supports us when we're in need. Do you understand the way it works? That I support someone in need and in exchange, this is, a, this is a transaction with God. 
Do you understand? It is a transaction with God. You, you cannot see it as anything less. That when I help a person in need, God, Allah, the, the, the master of the heavens and the earth will help me when I'm in need. And do you think that I will ever be in need? Do you think that you will ever be in need? I'll tell you for sure you will. Even if it is not in this life, it will be in the next life. Every single one of us is going to stand in front of Allah on the day of judgment, yeah? Does anyone have a doubt about that? We don't have a doubt about that. We're believers. And when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, we are all going to be desperately in need. And at that time, if we helped someone in this life, guess what happens then? Allah will help us when we're standing in front of Him. And I promise you that's when we are desperately in need of help. The Prophet ﷺ tells us that Allah will continue to support us so long as we continue to support others. This is a prophetic tradition. This is a sahih hadith. That when we continue to support others, Allah will continue to have our backs. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says something that will blow your mind. You know, when we think about righteousness, when we think about how to be religious, how to be beloved to God, what do we usually think about? We think about rituals, we think about praying, we think about fasting, right? If I told you, think about a person who is most loved by Allah, what would you think of? You'd probably think of a person who spends their nights and days in the masjid, right? Or of that sort. Do you know there's a hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ tells us that the most beloved person to Allah is the one who is the most helpful to people. And the most beloved deeds or actions to Allah is that you would bring happiness to the heart of a believer. That you would help a believer in their time of need. That you would protect the believer from harm or hunger or help them pay their debts. Now this is the part that blows my mind. The Prophet ﷺ says in this hadith that I prefer, it is more beloved to me that I would prefer to help my brother slash sister included in need, in their time of need, than to be in i'tikaf. Anyone know what i'tikaf is? Seclusion in the masjid. He said that it is more, I would prefer to help someone in need than to be in i'tikaf in this masjid. Is he pointing at this location? Where is he pointing, guys? Where is the Prophet Sallallahu talking about? Which masjid is he standing in? Masjid al Nabawi. This is the masjid in Medina. He is saying that it is more, I prefer that he prefers to help another person in need than to be in seclusion in the, Mad the Masjid and Nabawi of Medina for a month. For a month. This is the, the weight of being at the service of people in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want to wrap up with this. When I make an appeal to people to serve others. When I make an appeal to people to give to others, I tell them this, that honestly, you are serving and giving to yourself first. You are protecting your own interests when you help others. Because at the end of the day, we're human and we wanna protect our own interests. We want self-preservation, we want safety for ourselves and our families, this is how you do it, is be at the service of others. When you hear that someone is being treated unjustly and you stand up for that person, it will come back to you. And that's a promise of God. It will come back to you by God himself. He will guard you. He will protect you in your time of calamity and in your time of need. The second thing I want to tell you is this, and I'm just going to wrap it up with a story. Um, a few days ago, so I, I go to and from airports a lot, right? So I end up riding in a lot of Ubers. Um, and one of the Uber drivers was talking about some investments 
that he was very focused on, okay? So me and my husband are sitting in the, in the Uber and he's talking about this thing called Bitcoins. Basically, it's this new type of currency that's up and coming. Anyway, so what he says is this. This guy tells us that the only reason he is doing Uber driving, he already owns a business, but the only reason he's doing Uber driving is so he can buy Bitcoins, okay? But here's what I found really interesting. He said that a few years ago, before this Bitcoin thing it, you know, got big, there used to be Bitcoins that you could use to upgrade in video games, okay? So he said that he, five years ago, used Bitcoins to upgrade in a video game. And he's saying that now those same Bitcoins that he used for a video game, had he kept them, he would be a millionaire. Do you understand? So he had bought Bitcoins before they increased, they went, they went, now they're $7,000. Each one is worth $7,000. But at that time, he was just using them on video games. They were, they were worth less. And so he spent them on upgrading armor for a video game and getting a faster car or something. And had he kept them, he would have been a millionaire. So he's like, he actually slapped his face. He was like, he was like beating himself up physically, literally, at the idea of how he wasted that opportunity. You know what I was thinking when I was listening to that? That that's how we will feel on the day of judgment, but times infinity.